Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey. We're uh, holding down the fort on a Thursday uh, afternoon in the home stretch here. It's, uh, we'll be at the weekend before we know it. Uh, it's feeling less and less like Groundhog's Day. I don't know why. It's just maybe getting used to a different routine. It has a different feel than it did a month or so ago, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> understatement. Mm -hmm. But a month or so ago, the whole world had turned upside down in one day. And, and every day we were getting this huge shift. Right now we're not really, even when new stuff comes out, yeah, it's really not all that new. I think we're going to talk about a couple of those things today, right? <sighs> if we have to. <laughs> yes. Yes, we have to. <laughs> or... I can't, I, I am restarting my computer, Tom. So I can't help with the back end right now oh, to respond to people. So all y'all that always check in early and say, hi, I can't see you yet. So that's why I'm not responding. Well, I'm uh, sharing the uh, Paycheck Protection Program loans, frequently asked questions that uh, came out yesterday. This was... Uh, new guidance offered by the Small Business Administration. Um, and I put the link to this document in the uh, CBT resource page so you can get it. I'll copy it and paste it in chat as well. Um, I was not overwhelmed with, with, with a lot of, you know, new and exciting insight perusing this. I'll, I'll be frank. I, I didn't... Uh, study it, you know, as, as, as maybe as deeply as I, I, I could have. I, I intended to uh, go through it here just before this call, and I started going through it, and I found it a little, little difficult to read, and the stuff that I saw kind of looked like stuff that I think that we all already know. Did, did you have a chance to, to spend much time with it, Liz? I did. I read through it just thinking, hey, maybe I'm going to get some new golden nuggets here that we can share. I didn't find anything new, um, especially interesting. It was kind of the same old stuff. What I was hoping for was what I think everybody's waiting for is the guidance on how we're going to move past. How are we going to report it? How are they going to be deciding what, what's forgiven? How are the banks going to be making that decision? I, I mean, we all know what it's supposed to be, you know, do you have the right number of FTEs? Did you spend it on this amount of money? Blah, blah, blah. But we know, also know that it's a little bit more than that, like like the June 30th date. You know, how, how does that play in? I was hoping we would get a little bit more of that information that we didn't really get. But, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a long journey. You know, this is a marathon. So I guess this is another step or two. Maybe we're a little bit closer, but uh, I'm sure there's there's obviously there's there's more detail that that, that needs to come that, that we're going to have to have at the end of the, uh, you know, eight week cycle. When we're trying to figure out how much monies of PPP funds are, are, are going to be forgiven and treated as a grant. I guess the frustrating part about thing about that is the more we understood stand about that now, the smarter business moves we have the opportunity to be making. It's. Yeah, it's kind of like when the game is over and, and there's no more time left on the clock and, you know, you can't score or do anything. Then you find out what the rules are. It's like it's like playing a card game. And after it's over, you find out, you know, what you have to do to win. Yeah, I, I, that is exactly what it feels like. It, it, and it kind of feels like cheating. Like you don't know what what rules are they going to change or are they going to define in a way that's going to go against me that I wouldn't have done had you just told me up front. So it's, it is frustrating. But it is what it is. So, you know, I don't I don't also want to be too frustrated. What's the point in that? No, it's, uh, you know what's within our circle of influence? What can we control? And we've got too much work to do to burn too many calories fretting over things that yeah. we can't do a lot about. Very true. Anything going on exciting? Uh, my, in your my computer world? is probably not going to fix before we get off this call, I'm guessing. No, absolutely not. 
What's what's been going on with you? What what's your MMA group been up to? Ah, uh, okay. So actually, I just got off a phone call with Matt, and you you know Matt Ricketts is who I'm talking about for everybody who doesn't know. So um, for those of you that don't know Matt well or ha have heard his name bandied about a little bit, Matt is just a master at branding and marketing and uh, all things branding, actually. When I think of branding, I always think of Matt. He's the first name that pops up. So I was talking to him about the MMA groups and, you know, I love the groups and I love um, what we do in the groups. I think they're great. But anybody that knows me is going to hear me say that marketing and branding, that is not where my strengths lie. I have my own strengths. That's not them. So I was talking to Matt today about, so Matt, here's the program. What do I do with this? And, you know, 20 minutes, Matt's like, you need to do this and this and this and this. Liz, these programs are great. Why haven't you told people? About them? <laughs> I'm like, I know. I'm sorry, Matt. He's like, well, so he gave me a list. One, two, three, four, five, six, five bullet points with three other little <laughs> sub sections under there of things I have to do right now. So while I don't have great info right today, Tom, I sure as heck will. Thanks to Matt. You know, we've, uh, been, we've been told that so many times that we've, We've got some of the best material that nobody's ever heard about. I know, right? And and this is the face he was making. He was like, oh, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Matt. <laughs> uh, so, um, and, and he said that exact same thing. Nobody has the content that you guys have. You need to find a better way of getting people to know what it is that you're doing. I know. So anyway, he gave me some great ideas. He's happy to help me. Um, and so I was like, I'm just going to, I guess, tell people the basics. Uh, and he's like, no, do it the right way. Let's just, all right, just do it. I, okay, Matt, I will. So the MMA groups um, are, are you, you know what they are, Tom. They are mastermind accountability groups, but they're in the truest sense of the word mastermind and accountability. So taking what all the people know, combining it for something much larger and being held accountable to what you say you're going to do. But that's hard. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> that's a lot of work. And yeah, that's, that's who these programs are kind of for. You know, uh, there's three of them, and they're for people who actually are really trying to grow their businesses, really do want to do the stuff, and they really want to stay on track and, and do the right. Again, it ties right into the smart business moves. You know, so many of us, we just are busy, 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 busy all day long, but not working on the right things at the right time, in the right order for the right outcomes. And so that's what the MMA groups are in a nutshell. But more than that, I can't I can't give you right now because Matt would say, Liz, do it the right way. Well, speaking of Matt, let's show you a little bit of what we've done here on, on cleaning business today. Um, we've got some some extra help working behind the scenes at cleaning business today. So we got a little some extra content going on here. And I'm kind of excited about where that's going. Um, but if I go to coronavirus downloads go all the way down here to our ever-growing list here is a link to uh the marketing resources for you guys you, you, you were like who you're asking you know making who's heard of matt ricketts well if you've been with us either yesterday or the day before yesterday we had matt going back to back didn't we a double header yep yesterday um, and the day before yeah, yesterday we, we we spent the time talking primarily about marketing and you know smart things to do with our website and how to uh, basically just just get more leads and, and, and generate more revenue. And we rattled off a bunch of uh, resources that that are available out there, you know, in the digital world that you can use to um, a lot of different dimensions of this. You know, there here's you know, organization that will help you get ad copy because we were talking about marketing. 
there's a lot of different dimensions of that. I mean, you got to have a message, right? And then you got the whole graphics part of it, a great message, but if you don't make it look good and present it right, and then you get the whole technical part of it, of turning that into something digital and getting it out there in the, uh, in the, in the digital world. And part of that's making it right on page with the right keywords. And part of it is the off page stuff that you're doing with, with backlinks and so forth. I mean, it's just so many different parts of that. So here's, Here's a number of different resources, ad copy, uh, graphics, Moz is an SEO tool, local, Moz local is local SEO, that's free. You can plug your um, website into that and it'll give you some some insight to what's going on. We got time, maybe we'll jump into some of these before we're, we're over. Response Bid and Launch 27 are both online booking platforms. I also, uh, some of these actually do uh, scheduling and production management well he put made central in there i didn't pay him to do that by the way but uh, I, I i gave it to him tom because he mentioned it on the call i was taking notes of okay. everybody that he was mentioning and and made central was on there because that's who matt uses so yeah he, but yeah made central's got a booking tool as as well along with a lot of a lot of other stuff it's a it's an involved program it's a it's a heavy program. There's a lot to it. So uh, for smaller companies, there's probably better solutions. But, um, you know, if you want to want to want to dump head, you know, jump in head first. Made Central uh, has a lot of a lot of things going for it. Fiverr is uh, just a, a freelance site where you can find uh, people to do project work for you. 99 Designs, we've used that uh, on, on several projects. That's a way of getting logos and other graphics done where they kind of do it in a communal basis and they take a, uh, a, a scope of work, a request for proposal and farm it out to uh, contractors all over the world and they kind of bid on it. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a neat way to get a logo. You can get a logo for, I don't know, 300 bucks, give or take um, through that. Upwork and UpCity are both tools for, for website development. And well, Upwork is a freelance site. UpCity is a, is, is a tool for, um, SEO work. It used to be more like Moz. But they've kind of evolved in a different uh, direction, a um, little bit different now. I'm not as familiar with their their new model. We all know what Yelp and Nextdoor is. Google My Business, Google Guaranteed. A lot of good stuff there. So you can can, can download that, and the links are clickable. We can pick up on the discussion yesterday. And if you didn't see the discussion yesterday, we upload all of those to uh, our, our YouTube page on cleaning business today. So you can go back and see any of them if you want. And I guess they're also still out on Facebook. They're I mean, live. you can go to the Facebook page and scroll down and, and, and find it. Yeah. Somebody reached out to me yesterday. I think it was Denit. I'm pretty sure it was. I don't know if you're on, but Hey, Denit. And she was asking about whether or not Derek was going to come back and give any more insight into uh, buying companies. Uh, I don't remember him saying he, he was going to come back on. I think maybe if somebody wants to talk more to him about that, maybe just reach out to him. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, we know, we know where to find him. We have him on speed dial. We could probably coerce him into, uh, Coming, getting him here on a Friday might be difficult, but we could probably yeah. get him to come back next week. Yeah, he's not coming on a Friday, but yeah, if you guys want, I, I can't actually see anybody's comments, although it looks like my computer is. Yeah, it's cleaning business. Like, da, 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 da. You can't. Okay, well, let me. I'm, I can handle the comments here. Here we go. Your computer never came back, huh? It's on right now. I'm logging in. Um, let me, let me go back here. I normally see these things scroll by and got a lot of people saying hello, Denise, Debbie, Leslie's with us today. Hey, Leslie, Bridget. All the regulars. Yeah. Is um, Robin there? Not yet. Leslie's saying this is very blurry for me. Or is it just me or question, question, question? Is it just me being blurry, Leslie? Because it might have to do with me being on my phone. Yeah. Her her Android phone. That doesn't get lost like some other people's phones. Like some Apple phones? 
some iPhone. Yes. Yes. Uh, All yeah. right. We're asking about the downloads page on Cleaning Business Day. Let me let me copy and paste that. Denise says you're not blurry. She said what? She says you're not blurry. And Leslie okay. says no. Penelope says yes, it is blurry. And okay. Oh, Leslie says she cleaned her glasses. It's all good now. No. <laughs> I love that, Leslie. Oh, that's I, I'm she said she cleaned her glasses and it's still not good. Oh, okay. Oh, well, it's still blurry. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Right. Well, I'm logging in and I can't hear very well on my phone for some reason either. I don't know if the uh, audio is being routed to one of my Bluetooth devices or something. The problem with multiple Bluetooth devices everywhere. I'm going to share something else here while you're working on that. Did anybody out there get an email from Uber today introducing their new safety measures? I'm assuming anybody with it with an Uber account got one of those. You, did you get one, Liz? I did. And I'm putting it up on the screen here for those of you who may not have seen it. And they're just talking about, you know, their new safety measures. And that's starting May 18th. What is that, Monday? Where, you know, they're talking about, you know, face cover policy. They're talking about no front seat passengers. I click here for more. That takes me. I guess they got a nifty video here. The whole point of this is this is their communication plan. Um, for those of you who joined us yesterday or in previous days, we talk a lot about trust and how, you know, house cleaning has always been based on the relationship of house cleaning and how we sell our services. You know, trust is a huge part of it. And our clients give us a key to their home. How many people have a key to your home? Only people that you trust, right? It's not a large number of people. So if you want to be successful in the house cleaning business, you have to be able to establish trust. In order to establish trust, you have to be trustworthy. And a huge part of that is communication plans, especially in a COVID-19 world when there's so many things that are changing. It's a new paradigm. It's why, why do, what do we call this? It's unprecedented, right? Um, did we say, we didn't mention unprecedented yesterday, did we? Dang it. Yep, we did. Um, we did. But it wasn't you. It was Matt, I think. Also, Tom, I'm leaving off my phone. Can you bring me in on my computer? Be my pleasure. So, what's going on here with this, with this email? The subject communication plan to establish trust, right? We're trying to make. Uh, hey, Liz, can you hear us? I can. Okay. Awesome. Crisis averted. Now I can like check everybody's comments, make sure we don't miss any questions. I missed one yesterday. I was like, dang it. I remember last night when I was laying in bed. But this email that you all, you guys should all be looking for. If you didn't see it, it's probably, you know, like in your, 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 your junk. Um, is a really good example of part of a communication plan to demonstrate that you're being trustworthy in order to build trust because people aren't going to want to get in an Uber if they're afraid that they're going to catch COVID. Likewise, you know, there's a lot of concern on clients' parts that, you know, are we going to be bringing, you know, the disease into their home or are we doing the things that we're supposed to do to make their home safe? So we can talk about the plans that we've put in place, the measures that we've put in place within our individual cleaning companies, talk about the PPE that we're using, the special training that we're taking, and you know the, the additional products and precautions that we've introduced and how we've changed you know, our procedures to create more social distancing. I mean, you, just, you guys got the drill. We've been talking about this for a long time and putting it into an email like this and selling it to your clients. And as they've done over here, put it on your website and make that a bigger part of your communication.
plan. And even if you've done those things, I'm sure some of you have, probably a lot of you have, you know, sending that one email out, you know, a month ago doesn't mean the job's done. We've got to continuously freshen that up and do it because, you know, how many emails do you get that you don't even read? You know, I wouldn't have even paid any attention to this email from Uber if I hadn't been in kind of the mindset of, ooh, they're talking about, you know, precautions for, for COVID. And that's pretty important to me, too. Not because I'm worried about getting in the back seat of an Uber because I'm not going anywhere right now. But I'm figuring if Uber has some, some tricks up their sleeve to build trust, there's pretty smart people. I might want to pay attention to that. I do love that about all the different industries, right? If you see a big company putting out some type of communication and aren't they all right now, I'm looking for what I can um, borrow from their communication, how I can tweak that for our businesses because how many people do they have on payroll that are spending their entire week, maybe even the month, figuring out the perfect message to the customer. So, I mean, there's going to be some good stuff in there. Yeah, um, we do a, uh, sorry, Tom, go ahead, please. You know I'm saying? There's nothing coming out of Uber that's, that, that, that's an accident. Everything they yeah. do is with, with, with thought and purpose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, MGM. Hmm, I didn't get that. I'm, I'm going to ask you about that in a second. Uh, we do have Lucia's asking about uh, something that is... Um, um, boots on the ground here. Her cleaners are worried about changing bed linens. And what do we think about that? And what's your opinion? Uh, they strip beds and they'll put clean clean sheets on with gloves. We did have a some conversation about this earlier, Tom. Do you have anything? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to YouTube. Modern cleaning. I'll drop this link into chat. It'll probably be the easiest thing. We all don't need to sit here and watch YouTube videos on how to change bed linens in a COVID-19 world. But these uh, two, two videos here get into the, the hygienic bed linen removal with a one-person team. And then the alternative method is with a two-person team. These videos are part of the COVID-19 class that, you know, we offer through, through Modern Cleaning. So if you haven't taken that class, it's, it's mostly priced. It's like $39. It's a three-hour class, and it covers, you know, the bed linen part. It covers the PPE. It covers sanitizing, disinfecting, all the proper safety precautions, high-touch areas. It's specific for COVID-19 and everything that you would need to know to clean clean in the COVID-19 world. And those videos are pretty awesome. Heather Canning, I guess, uh, I guess one of your, your rock stars in the MMA world helped put those together. Right? Yeah. She's in success group. Yeah. Uh, she, and she was amazing. I was like, I need these videos. Anybody know where I can find these videos? I need them exactly this way. And she's like, when do you need them? I was like, I need them today. She's like, I have them for you in 30 minutes. <laughs> And she literally did. She was like, she called her daughter in. She's like, this is what we need. We need these videos. And they were ready. She's like, they're not good enough. She did them. So the final version was ready in an hour. But yeah, she's a rock star. She gets oh, things done. I tell Heather I like working with Heather because she gets stuff done. She does. I tell her, what's, I tell her something, something like, not quite like Something that. similar. Something similar. You might not use that stuff word, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Leslie, I'm glad that you're liking those videos and you're using them in training. Me too, right? I, I'm using them at, at our at our places too. They're awesome. I think they're great. Um, they're worried about releasing the virus in the air. Is this possible? So uh, yeah, nobody knows all of the details of anything, but should you be concerned about that? Of course. That That's what what the big concern is about. But the method that we show you here, we think is very, very safe. And uh, you're wearing your mask and you are keeping the movement to a minimum. So 
there's always stuff to worry about, Lucia. Always, 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 you're going to have um, more and more stuff to worry about. The, uh, one of the things you wanna be trying to do is give your professional house cleaners a, a feeling of safety, the psychological safety that we're always talking about. Um, be, because you, you can't get past someone's feeling of being unsafe. Uh, I, I know we've talked a little bit about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and that safety level is right above physio physiological needs, right? So once I've eaten and once I have water <laughs> and I have a safe place, I need safety. Well, actually, safety is right there. Got to have that, that safety. So if people don't feel safe, they're not going to be able to do their jobs well. Absolutely be working on how to make that happen. Did you have something, Tom? Looks like you no, had something. Uh, the evidence is starting to, to, to grow that it definitely is an airborne, you know, pathogen and you can, you know, there are a lot, there are studies of like people working in office spaces, call centers, stuff like that. And a lot of the cases and the, a, lot of the, a lot of these studies are coming from, from Asia where, where they've got more more history and 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 actually better better testing and tracing and we do that the the majority of the infections actually were were contracted airborne as opposed to um touching a surface and and bringing it uh to your 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 face there's a fancy word for that that i can't uh think of at the moment in terms of how you contract it by touching a surface but and that's really not important. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, yeah, you a lot of people who are getting sick are getting it from from an airborne thing by not practicing social distancing, being in a closed space, and just you know being in the air and they're breathing it. There was uh, another study where they, they they found in a hospital that had COVID COVID patients that most of the people that were getting sick were actually getting sick by using the communal restroom that being in a, a small stall that somebody with COVID was in there and they leave and somebody else comes in and it's in the air and they're, they're, they're breathing. And so, so we, we do need to be careful and mindful of that. The video about changing beds goes a long way towards mitigating that risk because it shows you how to do it without stirring up dust. And if you don't do that, you're, you know, it has to be, it has to be aerosol. It has to be in the air and, if it's like on sheets, as long as you're careful putting them away and taking them off, you're good. Then you're putting new sheets on. If they're out of the wash, you don't have to worry about them as much because they're clean. Yeah. So it's no more of a risk than, than most of the things that we're doing if you do it well and if you do it correctly, same as everything else. It's okay to touch things as long as you're not, as long as you're wearing gloves, as long as you're not touching areas and then touching your face, right? Washing your hands, all of the things are important. Yeah, it's scary, everybody agrees, it's scary. There's a lot of risk out there, but we can mitigate the risk as well. Uh, didn't we have something else to share today, Tom? Yeah, kind of along the, the the same lines of of communication plan and and building trust. Um, think about the industries that are really struggling to to to, to build trust in a COVID nineteen world to get clients to come back to them. Airbnb is certainly one of them, right? You know, there's there's a lot of. Uh, uncertainty and, and concern about, you know, getting an Airbnb right now because who was in it before you and, you know, how is it cleaned and, and, you know, is it safe and, and, and COVID free? So they've come out, Airbnb has come out with their own guidelines for, you know, how, um, you know, for everything from disinfecting to stocking the right supplies, everything you need to know. And these are guidelines that they're recommending that their hosts use to 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 keep the airbnbs safe and this is kind of in the same lines as the uber um email they're trying to be trustworthy they're trying to make their clients or their guests feel more comfortable 
Kind of along the same lines, uh, VRBO is doing the, uh, doing the same thing. Same general idea. I'll take the links to both of these and post them in our chat. I encourage you guys to uh, click on those, take a look at them, some things to learn there. If uh, anybody is out there cleaning, doing vacation rentals, Airbnbs, anything like that, this information could, could, could be useful. Huge. Yeah, you can borrow portions of it and use it on your own site. Also, yep. Lucia, I'm not sure if it's Lucia with your C as an S or your C as a CH. Give me a heads up, CH or S. Um, but what I wanted to say is one of the big reasons why your people are nervous is because they don't know. They're afraid because of the unknown. That's the reason why we want everyone to take the COVID-19 course, all of the professional house cleaners. Because when they do, now they know. Now they feel armed with knowledge and like they're in control. It's, there's, they don't feel fearful anymore. That was really hard for me to say, feel fearful. So uh, $39, you're not going to find a, a better value for uh, or a better way of getting your people to feel unscared. Lu, uh, oh, Lucia. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so I, I can't recommend that course strongly enough. Uh, I think that the people that have taken it on here can tell you. Uh, Leslie, I know you're on here. I'm not sure who else is on here that has uh, taken the, that course. Um, give Lucia some some um, information about whether how it worked to reduce the tension. Yeah, it reduced the tension for your people, right? Took away the fear. Now, nothing's going to take away people's fear 100%. I, I still have some fear. Tom, you still have fear. We all do. Tom, you just heard Tom say, He's not going anywhere. He's not getting in an Uber. <laughs> he doesn't care what Uber puts out. He's not getting in an Uber. So we all have some fear, but I feel like I can manage it. It's a manageable fear right now. You feel the same way, Tom. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not, not going to Uber because the only time I get in an Uber is when I'm like getting off of an airplane. And I'm not getting on an airplane because I've got no place to go because there's nothing happening anymore. <laughs> It's kind of like Tom. We both know that even if there was some place to go, if Disney World was open, you're not getting on a plane. We, we've had those discussions. Yes, I'm on the more conservative side. I'm I'm on the leading edge, arguably bleeding edge on technology and some other things. Early adopters on 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 a lot of things, but when it comes to figuring out where this whole COVID-19 thing is going and, you know, opening up the economy and how's all this thing going to work. I'm going to let other people get out there and kind of mingle around first and wait a few weeks and see who gets sick and who doesn't. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't need to go out to dinner you know, next week. I, I can, I can let that wait a little bit. Yeah. So uh, we have had that conversation. I'm going out to dinner. <laughs> Tom is not. I am. So he's going to look and see if I die. And if not, we're not going to look real hard over here. Um, then he's going to he's going to take the temperature check. Oh, you guys, Rosemary, Bridget, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'll put the, I'll put the link to the COVID course in the in the chat if anybody wants more info about it or wants to sign yeah. up for it. Yeah, and look at that, Lucia. I mean, really, for $39, I don't think you could find anything that is going to give your people more peace of mind. Uh, let's see. Anybody have any questions today around um, PPP, IDLE, anything like that? I'm doing the class right now. I just want to be prepared before they ask me more questions. You know, what, as you take the, the class, you'll, you'll see you're going to feel better, too. You're not going to be nervous that they're nervous because I know a lot of people are like, Ugh. actually, I get calls like this every single day. I just got one yesterday from a business that is over a million dollars 
she called me up and said, Liz, what do I do? One of my employees called me and said that she's not coming to work because she's scared. Now, this is a seasoned business owner. And I was like, oh, you know what to say. What's going on there? She's like, oh, she caught me off guard. And so now what do I do? I'm like, I know. That happens to all of us, right? She's been in business for years, at least 15 years. And she got caught off guard because, you know, it's an unprecedented event and an unprecedented time. Nobody has 100% of the answers 100% of the time at their fingertips. Right? We're all having to stop, think, and give our best answer. We might have to go back. Uh, question about the PPP. They have 10 days from the time they approve it to fund you, Debbie. If if that helps on that question right there. And it, it depends on the we've, we, we've used a traditional bank, bb and we've used um, cabbage, and we've used blue vine. And different experiences, blue vine did it just like that. I mean, the difference between you know, actually signing the, the 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 contract and getting the money back, it was like it seemed like it was twenty four hours. It was quick. Cabbage and both of them were really quick in terms of taking the application and getting getting you approved, um, like within within a day or two. Um, but cabbage took like almost two weeks after the agreement was signed until they actually uh, got the money to us. I don't know for sure, but it kind of felt like if they wanted to, you know. In banking, they got this term they call kiting, where if they can hold, the longer they can hold your money, they can invest that, make a little bit of interest and stuff on it. I don't know if that was happening or not, but it took them a long time. The amount of time that it took them to say that you got the money was like that, but then it took us almost 10 days to get the money after, after we did everything that we were supposed to do. And the traditional bank, they took a much longer in every step of the process. Blue Vine, Blue Vine was our best experience. Bridget, don't don't get upset about still nothing from your idol. Uh, a lot of people, um, nothing, 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 nothing seems like forever, and then all of a sudden, bam! There's have you have you gotten your advance money yet, Bridget? Did you get your ten grand? Um, I'm just curious about that. Uh, Tom, Debbie wants to know: Do you need to sign anything after it goes to underwriting? Yes, I believe so. I've done so much of this for so many, for so many loans. It's just, well, it's it's. You're talking about the PPP. Yeah, she's some cases me. yes, in some cases no. I mean, I was dealing with a traditional bank, and I had a relationship with these guys for like 20 years. I didn't even know it was coming. I just when we looked at the online banking one day, and I like, you know, there's a lot of money there, and I still haven't signed anything. So I think this has just happened so quick that banks are doing it differently. When we were doing it with Cabbage and, and, and Blue Vine, yeah, we, 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 we signed something after we were approved. And like I said, Blue Vine had us the money like within a day and Cabbage took much of the two weeks yeah. as they could. Yeah, I don't remember signing anything. I remember telling Tom, yeah, money's in my account. I <laughs> don't know what happened. I was just sort of surprised. Uh, but I have a big bank. And I've been with that bank for 45 years. So that tells you something. They know where you uh, are. Say it again? They know where you are. They know how to find yeah. you. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not afraid uh, that I'm going to abscond with their dollars. Uh, yay, Rosemary. She just got hers. Woohoo! And Bridget, yay, if you already got your advance, what I'm going to tell you is don't worry. What I have heard repeatedly from a lot of different people is don't forget that is an advance on a loan, right? It's like this. If you, this was the example that I got that completely resonated for me. If you give your an employee um, an advance on their paycheck, it's money that they've already earned. There's always already been approved. You give them the advance. Is there any reason why they would worry that they're not going to get the rest of the money? No, because it's just an advance on the money that has already been approved. So you got an advance on the loan that is 
already yours. So is what I have heard. So I would say, don't worry. You've got the advance. Your idol's coming. And even if you haven't got the advance, I wouldn't, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything either. In one case, we never got the advance. We just got, in, we got the 150000 We missed the, I guess, first tranche when they were handing out like half a million dollars. But, you know, now I, I think the max is 150000 yeah. That, you know, we never got to, we never got to 10000 but we got the hundred and fifty. So, you know, go figure. But if you get your PPP, it's the same thing, right? Because that 10 grand was going to come off your PPP anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so it, it's really the same. Uh, but you shouldn't worry, Bridget. Just ah, deep breath. Your money's coming. Okay. And Starlene, uh, Wells Fargo never went through. I, gosh, I heard a lot of stuff about Wells Fargo, I, and not a lot of it was great. Same thing with you, Tom. A lot of the big banks struggled with that. Yeah. I, mean, I guess, I guess by definition, being a big bank, I don't know. I don't know. But the, but the tech, the tech platforms, they, um, all, all, all the tech companies seem to, to be able to turn around a lot faster. And you got all your money on Monday. Woohoo. Congratulations. That's awesome. Happy for you, Starling. Um, Martha, if I got the PPP, can I apply to Endless? You know what that means? Idle, maybe? Oh, Idle. Yes, absolutely. You can get both, the PPP and the Idle. The E-I-D-L, if that's what you're talking about, Martha, then yes. If you're talking about maybe the name of a, a bank or a lending institution called Endless, then uh, let us know if that's something different. But if it's Idle, then yep. Yep. And yes, you can apply for the idle and PTT, both of them. They're two different things. And, and Matt shared with us yesterday that they've still got a hundred and some odd billion dollars worth of monies in the idle. Yeah, good chunk. Yeah. Yep, and and we all have gotten both, Martha. We've gotten the idle and we've gotten the PTT. Uh, B of A didn't come through, but. Celtic Bait did. Got my PPP funds today. Yay! And for all of you getting your PPP funds, I hope you have been working on your plan so that you can get those the maximum funds forgiven. I hope, I hope, I hope. We've been talking a lot about that. Uh, Rosemary, we've been with Chase for 20 years and got nothing from them. Ah, it's frustrating, right? We got our PPP from Harvest, a firm in California. We're in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, you got it, and that's the that's that's really the bottom line that counts, right? The outcome. Yes, got the money. Yeah, Bridget. I know, <laughs> like she's got she's got hearts. Like, okay, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling good. Better. I'm loving stuff. Yeah, we're we're with you. Ah. Uh, and and, okay. and one other thing about the PPP, you can apply to more than one institution. You know, in in one in one case, we applied to three. And, and Blue Vine was like the third one, and that just, you know, went through right away. So don't, you know, if you've applied with a big bank or applied with anybody and you haven't been approved. One little caveat there. You know the, the Q&A that came out yesterday? It, yeah. it did mention that while you can, most of the time you can apply multiple places, um, there are some banks that, um, you are not allowed to apply somewhere else. That was all the information that was given. Not who, how, what. I was like, what? How would they even know? I mean, not to be like obnoxious, but how would anybody know who I applied with? And so, what would they find out? I depending on your bank, you can't. I mean, but they didn't say say who. Okay. Do you remember what question number that was? I don't, Tom. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I did. I can always look for it. Um, yay, Lucia got her PPP last week. Yay. Yes, Debbie, absolutely. Gosh, you know, I didn't know this was a question, Tom, but now this is two people on this one thread. All right, everybody, we need to be getting this message out stronger. Idol and PPP. You guys want to apply for both, and sooner is better. better. Chase told us we could not apply elsewhere. Thankfully, we did. Wow. Okay. So that that might be the bank that they were talking about then, Rosemary. So 
I'm glad you did too. I maybe go into Chase and you know redact your your application since they told you you couldn't apply. Um, that might be smart move to do there since it was written that you can't. You know, and just for 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 clarity's sake, I'm going to go to sba.gov. And this is their website. I can just click anywhere on the COVID stuff. I'm going to go to coronavirus funding options. It takes me down here. EID right. loan. Right and here, Debbie. She's asking this question right now. So, Debbie Baker, this is where you go. Tom is showing you right now. Right here. You see this button? Bang. And it's got several, you know, depending on if you're a sole proprietor or if you're a corporation. Now, Tom, that did say to apply for agricultural loan. Does that matter at all? Well, it said and agricultural loan, I believe. Oh, okay. Right? Let's, let's go back and make sure. Okay. Idle loan and advance for agricultural business. Yes, so. great. Thank you. Um, okay. And whoever, whoever else it was, somebody else asked earlier. Let me see if I can find it. I think it was Martha. Yes, Martha, you need to go here too. This is this is for the idol. You can get up to an extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you guys. The idol, remember, is the thirty-year loan at three point seven five percent and your first payment is not due for a year where your PPP is your first payment is due in six months it's a two-year loan and it's at one percent guys I'm reading something here for the first time that oh. we probably want to make note of I'll blow this up a little bit to make it easier to see uh, SBIA has resumed processing idle applications that were submitted before the portal portal stopped accepting new applications on the 15th and will be processing these applications on a first come first serve basis. SBA will begin accepting new idle and idle advance applications on a limited basis only to provide relief to U.S. agricultural businesses. So you know, there's a, the, the magic number that, that, that we can call for, for the SBA, and I can, can, can get that and, and drop it in the link as well. And I would call them and, and ask to make sure, but I'm kind of reading that as maybe we, if you haven't applied, maybe. That's what Karen just yeah. said, Tom. Okay. Karen Coy says, I thought Ida was only accepting ag agricultural businesses. That's so it. here's what I'm going to say. They're only accepting at agricultural. Okay. Then what's it going to hurt to apply anyway? Who knows what, if they're going to refund, I would want to have my application in there. Um, because we don't know uh, how many times have the rules changed for us. I would say do the best that you can. Uh, they aren't accepting new applications for service industries. Don't, don't get held back, you guys, by uh, information that could be 100% accurate, but we don't know how it's going to change. We, some people, when they heard that the idol, uh, the monies were out, they didn't apply. And then it, it became a, a situation where it was so long, it was so late, that now they're still struggling. So when had they done it in the beginning, even though they hadn't been, they were done funding at that time, it still would have been smart to get yours in. So when they refunded money is available again. Yeah. It, it does sound like if your application was in before April 15th, you have a chance. Um, but I, I don't even care if they say you don't have a chance. If there's a place for you to apply, I'm saying apply, apply anyway. The worst case scenario is they say, hey, 
didn't we tell you we weren't going to accept your application because you're not an agricultural agricultural business? Oh well, how how much of your life did you waste? Would it take Tom maybe 15 minutes to apply? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's really fast. Oh, and easy. Good so, job, Bridget. Yours, I already told you yours is coming. <laughs> yeah, not worry. You already got the advantage. Here's the 800 number. It's, uh, you know, I'll throw it up on the screen. Yeah, that's great. I got that from inside my uh, SBA idle portal. And it says, if you need help, call this. So I would presume there's a human being on the other end that can help you. We've been, we went through that drill. We've talked about this a lot over the last few weeks. They got an army of people answering phones from eight in the morning to eight nights. And that's Eastern time seven seven days a week and they're awesomely nice sometimes they're not always the most knowledgeable but you know they're they're there and they, they try to be helpful and if you call and don't get an answer that, that that's to your liking you can call again you know sometimes i mean you just don't know but uh, oh yeah tom's right but i also wanted to say one more thing to debbie and to martha you never know when there's going to be a glitch in the system. That happened to us. We saw a couple of little glitches. And if you did this that Tom's talking about right now, call back, keep calling, calling, and you can get pushed through without even knowing that you were getting pushed through. It's faster getting through now. Ask for tier two rep. Ooh, that's new. And that's an awesome more piece of advice. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. Thanks, Karen. So you guys heard that, right? Uh, Martha and uh, I don't remember. Debbie. Martha and Debbie. Uh, remember, ask for tier two rep. All right. So fingers crossed for you guys. Oh, I just saw the time, Tom. It's already 2.53. Can you please pull up some links for us? Uh, cleaning business today. Well, there you go. Oh, we're gonna do modern cleaning. Modern cleaning. Okay. We, we, we talked about the COVID class. Mm -hmm. And it's a three hour course. You gotta, got a, a test at the end, get a certificate completion after uh, successfully completing the test. If you wanna just do one class and enroll immediately, you can right. click on this button here. If you got multiple uh, people like in your company and you wanna enroll them all together, you can get discount if you do that. You pick out, click over here. And the big class that we're putting together is our professional house cleaning program. And we're launching this over the course of May. We have course one, I mean, class one and class two have, have been, uh, have gone live. Three through seven, we're going to be publishing over the balance of, of, of May. We're, we're getting those finished up now. It's a $99 class. You can get discounts for pricing. Um, it's about, I'm saying seven hours, probably going to be a little bit more than that by the time we're through, but we're not sure yet. Each each class roughly is going to average out to be an hour, we, we believe. Some are going a little bit more, some might come in a little bit less. You can get group discount here as well and purchase by clicking that button. Both these classes are made for cleaning, made for cleaning technicians, cleaning professionals. It's not designed for cleaning business owners. They could be, it could be useful to cleaning business owners, but this is the information that as a cleaning business owner, you would want your cleaning professional to have. The COVID class is important for, for, for being safe and getting the outcomes you're looking for specifically for COVID. The, PHC class is, is a much broader, more comprehensive treatment for everything in terms of you know, the science of cleaning, what hygienic cleaning is, all the different types of germs and pathogens you run into, all the safety precautions you're supposed to take. You know, safety is much broader than just protecting yourself from the, uh, you know, from COVID-19. It's everything from slip and falls to, you know, all you know, vehicle safety, all the things that you need to to to, to know. Um, what am I missing, Liz? Well, I wanted to point out that the the um, the course we keep saying it's not designed for you guys; that it's more for your 
um, house cleaning professionals. But actually, I, I don't think that's that is accurate because the course is designed for you to be able to give to your professional house cleaners uh, because it, it's going to lend your entire company credibility and it also lends you credibility. It is designed for you to be able to augment your business in the best possible way. So the information is, is designed for the technicians, or I'm sorry, not technicians, but your professional housekeepers to be able to absorb and engage and to learn and understand. But, but it is created for you. You guys need to see it and look at it so that you can understand, oh, it's not, it's not just like, here's the right kind of vacuum or here's the right way to do anything. There's none of that in here. It, there is nothing in here that you're going to, well, you're going to look at and say, we don't do it that way in my company. That's not what this program is like. It's not what it's about. You don't have to worry about that. I'm really hoping a bunch of people will get on and, well, I know we've already had quite a few people that have gotten on and uh, and taken it at least the first, the first class to be able to see that, wow, it's big picture education. This is truly professional cleaning education. It's not about just, what we like, what we think, what we do in our businesses. All right, I do have some questions, Tom, okay. also, that I thought you could help with. Um, I know that the class is purchased for the future, um, and they must be used within 90 days of the purchase. So if you all don't know that, whatever you purchase has to be used within 90 days. But does that mean that those classes just have to be started before the 90 days, or do all seven of the classes need to be completed in the 90 days? Started. Started. Okay. Good to know. The next one, is, Tom sounds so serious. Started. <laughs> I don't. This is an easy one too, Tom. If I only have four or five of the six people that I want to take the class first, can I just hold out for another month or so and and submit the spreadsheet with the names and emails of those who I want to take it right away? Do I have, how, how, how does that work? You can, you can submit the names as time goes on. You don't have to give them to us all at once. And I'm gonna, you know, for you guys who hang here to the end, I'm gonna, gonna give you a, a little, little secret. We're moving over to another platform that's gonna make this a lot easier for cleaning business owners. And you'll have a login for your company and you can, sign up your own cleaning professionals when you have a need to do that. So if you buy 20, 20 seats you know, for, for, for 20 people, you can sign up one person a week. And you know the old platform that we were using had that 90 day limitation on it. The new platform we have allows us to be a lot more flexible on that. Um, I don't think that I, mean, I don't think that you can buy one and use it ten years from now. I mean, there has to be some type of time limitation, but it's not going to be as tight as as, as ninety days. Ooh. Everybody and everybody who's signing up on the program now, or, or you know, in the past for that matter, we're moving all you guys over to the new platform. The class. Yeah. The programs are going to be the same. The classes are going to be the same. The material, the knowledge checks, the exams, all of that's going to be the same. But you'll have, rather than sending us the spreadsheet and us having to upload that, you'll be able to log in yourself. Plus, what people have been asking about, can you see progress in terms of what your, your cleaning professionals are doing? In the new platform, you can. You can see who's signed up who started who's completed and, and and where they are in the program it's uh going to make one of my questions there tom so that's great that was one of the questions i had i love that the business owner is going to be able to see the progress uh because really in my mind this 
is a huge value to the business owner. So not being able to see who's got what information, that that was you know kind of a, a little sticking point. So I love that. Hey, Debbie and Leslie, I'll get you guys in just a second. I have one more question over here. Um, let's see. I understand that once a student actually begins the class that they can do it at their own pace. But is there a time limit for them to complete all eight classes so that they can then earn the certificate of completion? Is there anything like that, Tom? To my knowledge, no. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, I hate to say no completely because on the outside chance that three years from now, somebody's going to come back and you know what I'm saying? But Yeah. But we're thinking six months is probably safe. You, I would say six months is very safe. Okay, I love that. Uh, let's see. Governor Inslee is just giving me a little notification right here. Let me get rid of him. Sorry. All right, Debbie, and I think Leslie sort of have the same issue here. What if you sign someone up and they have decided not to come back to work? Can I replace her name with another cleaner? That's one. And then Leslie says she paid for an employee that quit after she paid for the course. Can she email us another, um, can I email you guys and get a credit for that one? Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna give us a different name, but getting a credit. I don't think you need to get a credit, Leslie, because now they're going to be good. It's not just 90 days anymore. Once we, once we get this okay. over to the new platform, you can, can manage that yourself. Um, exactly how all that works, I'm, 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 I'm not sure, but if you wanna, you know, well, you know, we have the ability to, to 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 take care of that for the moment. Once we once we get it, when I say take care of it, we can give you a credit that you can assign to to another person, another another employee, if you will, Leslie. And I guess Debbie's yeah, kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we can we can yeah. do that. Just send an email to mail at, at moderncleaning.com. Say you talk to Tom, and he said that we could do that. <laughs> Yeah, you got a little juice behind you there. Debbie, same thing for you. Send send that email over. Uh, okay, that, that sounds good, Tom. We and are two over. Wait, uh, five seconds. Three, two, one. Bye, guys. See you uh, tomorrow at five. Thank you. Two o'clock Pacific. Bye.